facing our limiting concepts. I'll start my talk off by asking you a simple question. What do you want in life? Usually when I ask people that question, a lot will tell me what they don't want. They'll give me a list of everything they hate about their lives. I believe deep down at a fundamental level, to some degree, we all want the same things. We all want to live life to the fullest. We want our lives to be of significance. We want to find our purpose, our individual way of making the world a better place. But what happens when we're stopped from being who we really want to become? Let me introduce myself. I'm Katrina Chambers. And I was first introduced to concept therapy in 2018 when I took my first concept therapy class. I've taken all of the instruction. And in 2023, I took the foundational teacher's training course. And I am now proud to say I'm a provisional teacher, part of the newly formed teaching team called the XYZ teaching team, consisting of myself, Mary Gorton, and Trish Holder. Before I took teacher's training, I taught alongside some incredible teachers, all who are my mentors. I also served as secretary of the CTI board. And while on the board, I was part of the education committee, the technology committee, and I currently work as a professional committee. And so I currently work as a professional in corporate America with over 20 years of experience. You see, I joined Concept Therapy back in 2018 because I was searching for a better way to live, a better way of life. I was searching for a better way to answer the questions, what do I want in life? How do I make a better life for myself? One that is purposeful and fulfilling. You see, on the outside, I had checked all the boxes. Life assured me If I checked all of the boxes, I'd be happy. I graduated from college. I landed my dream job. I married the love of my life. We bought our dream home. But I didn't have fulfillment or feel as though I was living a life with purpose. Well, since joining Concept Therapy, I learned a lot about myself. You see, we have an axiom that we use in this philosophy. And it is know thyself. I believe that's the only way we can know anything that is through knowing ourselves. So my talk today is about facing our limiting concepts. And what is a concept? And how do these concepts guide you to building a purposeful life or not? It's my hope today to help you understand these fundamental questions. But first I wanna make sure we're all on the same page when we talk about the word concept. What is it? Well, we have what we describe in concept therapy as a basic concept. And in order for us to know ourselves, we must know our basic concepts. Why? Well, because the basic concept provides us a foundation for understanding why each of us thinks and behaves in a particular way. Now, let's deconstruct the meaning of basic concepts, starting off by providing a definition of the word basic. Let's use the dictionary. So, if we open up our trusty dictionary, Basic basic typically refers to something that is relating to or forming a base. It's a foundation or something that is fundamental. Another definition of basic is a starting point or beginning. So what is a concept? Well, it's a fixed idea in the consciousness of an individual. So 
a basic concept is described in concept therapy as a fixed idea in the consciousness that forms a fundamental base or foundation or starting point for how we think and how we behave. Our basic concepts are really the foundation upon how we build our lives. We are all familiar with an iceberg. But the remarkable thing about an iceberg is that only one eighth of the ice is visible above water. The other seven eighth part of the iceberg is below the surface of the, of the water, the part that we don't see. You know, that's the part that's moving the iceberg below the currents. It's actually the currents underneath that's moving that iceberg. And it was Sigmund Freud who first made the analogy of the human consciousness being like an iceberg. He said the consciousness mind is similar to the one eighth of the iceberg above the waterline. That's the visible part, the part we can see what we are aware of. The subconscious mind can be likened to the seven eighth of the iceberg that is below the surface the part we can't see, the part we are unaware of. The subconscious mind is where our basic concepts reside. Our basic concepts reside below the surface. They are what moves us. They are really driving the bus of us. And it's our basic concepts that that determines the course of our lives. We all have numerous basic concepts that are beneficial, and we have basic concepts that are detrimental, that limit us in some way. Let me ask you, do any of these phrases sound familiar? Oh, I just can't lose weight. I just can't gain weight. Or I'm always running behind. I'm always late. I just can't get anywhere on time. Or I'm so, cl- I'm so clumsy. I'm always tripping over something or dropping something. Or I'm just so dumb. Notice any recurring themes in each of these statements? Most of them use the word I. And many are coupled with a feeling. A feeling or an emotion is an indicator of personal identification. And so when you identify with or attach feelings to an idea, guess what? It becomes fixed. Or you can say a concept for us. It's no longer just an idea. Now it has influence in our lives. Idea plus emotion or feeling equals a concept or fixed idea. But guess what? If we do not attach an emotion to it, if we simply, if it simply remains an idea, there is no concept, there is no influence in our lives. You see, basic concepts are very personal. They're not the same for everybody. We live by our basic concepts. You might be asking how. Well, because they're the choices that we make, the choices of clothes, the choices of where we live, the choices of the food we eat, our jobs, our friends, hobbies, even the colors of, that we wear and identify with. Those are all choices in our lives And they're based on our basic concepts. Our choices are very individual. They're not the same for everyone else. Our choices are so very personal. So can you see how basic concepts influence your life, your personality, how it drives your behaviors? Well, the next question is how do we 
actually acquire these basic concepts? Well, there are really only two ways. You see, the first is we come into this world with, with some of our concepts, either by our inheritance or our genetics. The second way, and many of our concepts are acquired from our environment, our sphere of influence after we're born. They come in the form of suggestions from our parents, our teachers, our religion, our society, our friends, and the media, and social media. Even our thoughts can form basic concepts in our own minds. See, I can go on and on, but you see, you get the idea. Any suggestions from just about anywhere, those ideas and suggestions become our basic concepts. But we want you to understand that suggestion serves as a basic concept in the subconscious mind. The surprising part is we're not even aware of how we acquired many of our concepts in the first place. In fact, most of our basic concepts are unknown to us consciously. And many of our limiting concepts were acquired from people who love us and were trying to do good by us and for us. For example, family members who may excuse bad behaviors or poor performance. You may have a father who says, oh, it's okay. Your mother and I were poor in math too. We understand. Don't worry about it. Or guess what? Your father. He was scared of water too. We never liked to swim. You know, as a matter of fact, your sister almost drowned in a pool once. We never go near a pool. See, what they're doing is they're trying to make us feel good about ourselves, about our self-imposed fears and limitations. But those limitations are just being reinforced by so-called sympathetic comments. They only, they only serve to increase our limitations. But alternatively, there are many basic concepts that tend to serve us in a positive way as well. But I want to emphasize, and you have to understand, it is suggestion from our environment, everything all around us every day that serves to create a basic concept in our subconscious minds. It's also the suggestions that we make to ourselves. So how do you know what basic concepts you do have? Well, it's really very simple to identify many of them. I want you to do, I want you to listen to yourself. I want you to listen to the phrases that you regularly say about yourself. When you say, I always, or I never, and it's followed by a feeling, well, that's a surefire way that you are identifying with one of your basic concepts. See, you're telling yourself that subconscious part of you, how it should act, how it should perform, how it should behave for you. And guess what? Your subconscious will show you the results of what you believe to be true about yourself and the world around you. Everything that is expressed in our bodies and our environment comes from our subconscious minds. It will make it true by showing you evidence of what you believe about yourself and the world. But guess what? The good news is you have the power to change it. So if you want to change yourself or change your environment around you in the same, in some way, change the way you think. Bring into your field of consciousness or awareness those negative basic concepts that 
no longer serve you in your life. Bring them to the light of day from beneath the surface so they are no longer hidden from you so that you may analyze them so that you can neutralize using your power of reason and will and attention. And then I want you to say to yourself, this thought, this act, this belief that I have no longer serves me today. And it has to be with repetition. Do this every day until you have destroyed that basic concept that was holding you back. Another good way to know your basic concepts is to look at what's actually in your life. Look around you. Look at what you have created. What have you attracted? Now, this is a surefire way or an indication to show you what you believe. Because what you believe is driven by your basic concepts. So identify your basic concepts that got you where you are today. And then change them. Ask yourself, what's showing up in your life? Is it health or disease? Is it happiness or depression? Is it success or frustration? Peace or anxiety? See, our world directly reflects our basic concepts. And so you may ask, can I change my concepts? Absolutely you can. That's what we've been talking about. This is what this philosophy is all about. The name of this course is called Concept Therapy, which means working with our concepts, healing our concepts. What are the things, the thoughts, the circumstances in your life that you would like to have change? What's on your bucket list of goals that you want to do? Remember, suggestions are ways that we acquire our concepts and they become lodged in our subconscious minds. Suggestions from ourselves, suggestions from others. Remember what I said about basic concepts. They serve as the starting point for how we act and behave. And this shows us why it's so important that we are aware of the suggestions and the ideas that are coming our way every day. The suggestions we're giving to others and to ourselves. We need to be vigilant, very vigilant. We need to evaluate all suggestions, all ideas before we accept or reject them. We should ask ourselves, does these ideas make sense to me? Will it be beneficial to me? Will it give me a positive payoff? Not just financial, but in every aspect of my life. Is this a suggestion that I want to accept, that I want to add feeling to and have as one of my basic concepts in which I build and base my life on? All we have to do is reject the idea by refusing to identify with any idea that doesn't make sense. Just don't add feeling or emotion to it. And remember, if there are no feelings or identification with it, there is no concept. Therefore, there's no influence in your life. Let me explain it in this way, in another way. Our concepts enclose us in a circle. And if it's a negative concept, this circle will prescribe limitations. 
it confines us. And it's the circle of limitations that we put around ourselves based on our concepts or other people's concepts. Some people call it their comfort zone. And, you know, sometimes we just get too nervous or scared to step outside of that comfort zone. The confines of the circle are determined by the breadth of the basic concept. Now, what are your circles of limitation? Every one of us has them. The circles really are defined by our habits, our values, our morals, our beliefs, our characteristics. We can change our circle of limitations simply by changing or broadening our basic concepts. What are the things, the thoughts, the circumstances in your life that you would like to have changed? The first question that we should ask ourselves is, what are the limitations do we have that we want to broaden? Are we aware of our limitations? Did we bring them up to the surface of awareness? It's my hope that you all are giving and receiving suggestions that are positive and beneficial so that our subconscious minds change for the better and not the worse. We're going to use one final analogy and my hopes to solidify this idea about basic concepts and how they work in our lives and how we can overcome them. We're all familiar with the Cinderella story. This is a beautiful symbolic portrayal of an individual with her limiting concepts. See, Cinderella was caught in her own circle of limitation. She thought that her life was all she could have. She didn't feel like she was deserving of anything better than her current circumstances. Her concepts, can be compared to the dirty rags that she wore. And then came along a fairy godmother and suggested to her that she could be anything she wants to be. She can have more from her life. And she gave her a concept that she is worthy. And it illustrates that we all should have hope for a better life. And so when Cinderella changed her concepts, her outer world began to change. So did her apparel. Her apparel became beautiful, representing a new beginning, rather than the darkness that she had lived in previously. Cinderella was given a suggestion by her fairy godmother. And the ultimate result is union with a better life in this case, with her being wedded to the prince. This is a powerful image for all of us when we understand the importance and the operation of basic concepts and realize that by putting in only the beneficial concepts and removing or changing the detrimental, we can change and shape our lives to be whatever we want. You see, concept therapy does not try to tell you which of your basic concepts are good or bad. That's up to you to determine that for yourself. Concept therapy provides the tools, the principles for you to know thyself. In our thriving concept therapy movement, we want you to understand that we are here to help help you along your path. Thank you for listening today and have a great day.